Welcome to what they got right. I'm your host, Samantha. And today we're talking about finding Dory. I'm not as fluent in speaking whales, Dory. So if you're a whale and watching this video, please forgive the subtitles. Just keep swimming, don't let the sharks bite. We talk and find a dory, it's what they got right. Finding Dory is the sequel to the hugely popular 2003 Pixar movie, Finding Nemo. Released 13 years after Nemo, it took a long time for Dory to find her way to the big screen. The earliest work on the sequel began only a year after Nemo's release, but there was a catch. Pixar wasn't allowed to work on it. They were essentially locked out of their own bedroom. At the time, Disney and Pixar were separate companies that did business together, but they weren't getting along. So, Disney decided to create its own CGI division and make the sequel itself, but the division lacked Pixar's expertise, so they reached an agreement and became one big company. But just think, Finding Dory could have been made to look really old school. Wow, I still love it. Once Pixar started working on the sequel, they immediately knew who they wanted their main character to be. Dory! Sweet, fun, and gutsy, Dory fit the bill for a leading lady. Except for one teensy detail, her short-term memory loss. A main character needs to move the story forward, but Dory's forgetfulness causes her to repeat herself over and over again. I'd still see that in IMAX. <sighs> anyway, after years of working on the story, Pixar had a eureka moment. Just because Dory can't remember things doesn't mean she can't surround herself by someone who can. Enter Hank. Hank became Dory's memory and propelled her forward in her journey to finding her parents. Thanks to the octopus, Pixar's story problems were solved. Which explains why he's always carrying around that coffee carafe. It represents all those late night work sessions the creators had coming up with the idea. Gotta keep that caffeine pumping. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Speaking of dead. In an earlier version of the story, after searching the whole ocean for her parents, Dory was supposed to discover that they had in fact died. They changed it because director Andrew Stanton is a father himself and couldn't bear to do this to Dory. His personal experience made him change the story. Good thing his favorite food wasn't sushi. You know what? Let's not go any further with that thought. Finding Dory ends with her and her friends escaping into the ocean. The original ending had several of them getting sent to a SeaWorld-like park. But after a visit from the director of Blackfish, a documentary highlighting the poor living conditions at SeaWorld, Pixar retooled the film. Imagine if the director of March of the Penguins visited Pixar. He would have convinced them to make Dory a penguin. It still works. Gosh, Pixar can do no wrong. Like Dory herself, the Finding Dory team didn't give up on their pursuit to create the most touching story ever. Sometimes all it takes is to just keep swimming. Thanks for watching What They Got Right. What should I talk about next? Let me know in the comments below. And click up there to subscribe to DreamWorks TV. I'm getting better.